Hi, it's Lauren Gray. I was just on the Zach Sang Show. Uh, we talked about my album, Guilty, comes out April 21st. We talked about my endless repetitive cycle of failed relationships and a lot more other stuff. So go check it out. Hello, beautiful human. Thanks for clicking on our conversation with Lauren Gray. I'm so excited for her to be here. She has a lot to say. Plus, a brand new album on the way and today's interview being delivered to your eyes and your ears by GoPuff. We all need things delivered, so why not go puff it? They'll get anything you need to your house or to your studio pretty much instantly. It's pretty impressive. Electronics, home goods, snacks, booze, whatever your heart desires, go puff will get it to you really quick. It's kind of impressive. Uh, try them out, and if you want to save money, which we all like saving money, just use my code when you're checking out. Zach10. Zach10. Ooh. You'll save $10 off your first two orders. Okay, here we go. Let's talk to Lauren Gray. God, hello, beautiful human. I'm Zach. That's Dan. We yep. welcome to the studio, Lauren Gray. Woo! Woo! <laughs> We're back. Yeah, we have an album to discuss. We do. Like, and since your last visit here, there's been a lot of life. Yeah, a lot of new revelations. A lot of growth. Yes, I would say. Right? Yeah. I mean, you look gorgeous, by the way. Thank you. You know, I know you very well, like, outside of this studio, and I'm always taken aback by how gorgeous you are. Stop. No, it's really something. <laughs> Don't boost my ego too much. No, it's incredibly striking. gotta make it through the day. It's incredibly striking. It's, Thank like, you. really wild. Thank you. Nah, but is it taxing to get ready every day, or is it just yes. so ingrained? No, it's it's taxing. Yeah. I hate it. It's my least favorite thing to do. I hate doing my hair. Really? Hate it. What's the worst part about being Lauren Gray? Um, I mean, I, I don't know. There's a lot. Depends on how deep you're willing to go. But surface level, I would say hair. We can go deeper. I hate doing hair. Um, I also hate taking pictures of myself. Really? I hate it. I'm, I get so sick of my face. <laughs> I hate looking at my own face. Do you feel like you, I mean, you have to look at yourself more than the average person. Yeah. And I just hate, like, after a while, you just hate your own face. I hate I hate taking pictures of myself. Do you know what a good photo of you looks like? Yes. Do you know what a bad photo of you looks like? God, yes. Is there anywhere in between? Um, eh, there's some that are, like, passable. I posted one today. I was like, eh, it's not my best work. Is that an issue when it comes to friends? What do you mean? I only ask as I have friends who need to approve photos before they go up. I... I care less now, I think. Like, if if I was having fun in the photo and I look a little beat, but it was a good time, a good memory, like, it's okay. It's so possible. It's, it's memory over makeup. Yes. Yeah. But it takes a moment to get there. Yeah, I've had some questionable moments, for sure. That's really interesting. Because, like, it's, like, dude, it got to a point where it was, like, contentious. And friends that you don't know of mine, but it got really fucking contentious. Like, I remember... One moment so explicitly, like we were like we just covered somebody's face with a fucking like sticker. It, it got really intense, you know. Yeah, no, I don't care. I don't care that much. No, but sometimes, I, but I also get it because those things do live forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Yeah, but there's, I mean, people are bound to see you in person, so bound to see you in person. Yeah, like you know, I mean, you but, can't you can't hide from it. No, nah, it's but, just my face. No, but photos are far reaching, you know. Yeah, I guess. internet's forever. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Is that scary? A little bit. What is the biggest stress that you deal with in a day? Hair. (laughs) Not true. Bullshit. Hair. That's sexist. The biggest stress that I deal with in a day, um, I think, is communication. Mm. I have a really hard time communicating with people. In all aspects of life. In all aspects of life. And I feel like I have a lot of different groups, like between work and then family and friends. I find it really hard to communicate because I, I'm not a texter. I don't really call either. So I just, I get it. I'm like a see you when I see you kind of person. Me too. It's really hard. It's unhealthy. Yeah. It's like, hard to foster deeper and, relationships. Yeah. That way. And I don't, I mean, I don't feel like I have to be in constant communication all the time. Like I get that. Yeah. But how do you balance it then? Mm, I don't know. I think I'm working on that. It's really hard, but especially with like my family being in Pennsylvania and then work is all the time and friends. I mean, I don't have a lot, but the friends that I do have. You value them. I value them a lot. Yes. You And, and by the way, like I think lack of communication from my experience hurts those who love us the most. 
Yeah. Because absolutely. all they do is give a shit. Yeah. And I'm a, I push people away pretty hard. So. Oh, fuck me too. Yeah. So. Yeah. And the people who hit me up the, the most are significantly busier than I am. You know, they're yeah. like, they got like, they're like, you know, it makes you feel like shit. It really does. Yeah, I try though. I'm trying. That's, that's all we can do, right? That's all we can do. We can, we can't control the outcome, but we can control the effort. Period. Inspiring. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, stick that in your pipe and smoke it, Daniel. Why, <laughs> why do you feel like you push people away? I don't know. I think um, I just have a hard time trusting people, and it's like um, it's like a test. It's like, oh, they really do like me if they're still, you know, gonna be there when I'm not actively in the picture all the time. Totally get that. And then when people aren't, it's like, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you're not there. Yeah. But then, it, the, the, I mean, you could look at it, and this is what I chal- I, 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 I'm challenging myself to do. I'm saying this mostly to myself because you just made me look at this from a whole new perspective. <laughs> then it's a one-sided friendship almost if we're there only when we need them, but not. That's true. That's true. Right? Yeah. But I just have a hard, t- I just have a hard time. Commu- it genuinely is one of my like biggest downfalls and my biggest flaws as a human being. I just am really bad at communication. I also get really nervous to communicate with people. I get very overwhelmed. Yeah. I like even going up to people, at, like when I see people even that I know at events, it's really hard to like go up to them. I, I don't know. I won't go to events because I don't want to see people like kind of know and have awkward conversations. Yeah. I met um, Shangela the other day. Amazing. So sweet. I was trembling like an hour for an hour after meeting her, even though it was an, a, an amazing experience. I just can't. I have I have really hard time interacting with people. Are you... Like I'm, I'm shaky it. right now, and I, I know you. Oh my god, yeah, relax. You can sit back. Yeah, I know. I can't help it. I'm just on edge at all times. I've been to your house. You've seen me very fucked up. I drunk. know. You see me house. in, yeah. Oh shit, I know that. Yeah, Lauren Gray and I, like, we know each other. We know each other. Yeah, fuck yeah. I went to your house for Fourth of July. Yeah. Oh my god, what a time. Yeah. No, I drove that day, so I didn't drink. Yeah, that was a time. No, but our friends definitely got drunk and then did ballet in the in your backyard. I wasn't there. I was asleep by 5 p.m. <laughs> <You think> you- <laughs> I was asleep. True. We were also at Coachella together. Yes. Yeah. Coachella. Well. Other, I don't know. Other <laughs> things. A lot, a lot of, random of things. other random shit. <laughs> I've been around the block. I went through a phase there where I was just out and about. Same, I stopped. Um, I actually don't drink anymore. I. God bless you. I know. Wow. You are America's bravest soldier. Knock on wood for me, please. Knock- Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm it's, proud of you. Thanks. That's it. Takes a lot of restraint, especially here. Oh yeah, and I'm still going out with the people you know. So like, I'm watching God, everybody. How you cope? I'm watching everybody <laughs> drink and everybody exists around me, and yeah. I'm yeah. It's, it's a good. It's a good. Um, it's like a good experiment for yourself. How much can I handle sober? Oh fuck yeah! And I drive everybody, and I like taking care of everybody because here's what I I realize, and I think you'll you'll understand this. I enjoy watching the reality show and guiding the reality show that is the friend group as yes. opposed to being one of the starring roles of it. Yes. You know, so I'd rather produce it from behind the scenes. Yeah. As opposed to being in the middle of it. Yeah. My favorite my favorite nights out are the ones where I come out feeling great. <laughs> and they're but there's stories, but they don't involve me. Yes. But they usually involve me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. You're there, but you're not there. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. I wish I could do that. Maybe I'll work on that. That'll be my New Year's resolution. Slow and steady. <laughs> yes. Uh, by the way, we have an album here. Yes. When did this album officially, the process for it begin? Uh, two years ago. Oh. Yeah. It started two years ago, um, but there was a lot of, obviously, releasing music is never easy. So mm. it takes a lot of, you know, loose ends being tied up and whatever analogy you want to use. Oh, it's know. true. There's like a thousand legal things, but there's also like product. There's a, the process is thick as fuck. Yeah. But it was, it's a different process because I'm not used to releasing music independently. So there's a lot more creative control, but with that comes so much more commitment because you're in charge, which I'm yeah. not used to with my music, which is great. And I love it, but it, it's definitely like a longer process because I guess I had I could actually do what I wanted to do. Uh, when we last talked, were you were kind of 
in the middle of independence or just figuring it out but it was just a single at the time yeah it was brand new like i had just i think i had just left the label and yeah. i was piece of work was my first independent single technically but um i'm pretty sure i had to like buy that song back you know what i mean cuz i wanted i wanted it but so that w- there was still ties there you know what i totally, mean totally. so this was my first time from scratch like working with the people i wanted to work with you know making the visuals i wanted to make making that, writing about what i wanted to write about dude like and you control all of it you sit at the center of it yeah which is great and that's what i wanted but it's a it's a lot of work yeah <laughs> it's a lot and a learning process no absolutely i've i think i've learned more about music in the past two years doing it independently than I have in since I started I started making music when I was 16 but like the past two years have been very formative how incredibly valuable yeah it's been amazing and I mean I got to work with people that I really really love that listen to me and know what I'm going through so the music has the opportunity to be authentic it's not you know a random session that I'm being stuck in and being told to write a hit it's music that that actually means something to me so the creative process started two years ago, but when was the last session that you held for this album? Oh my gosh. Um, actually, not that long ago because we did two writing camps. We did one, I'm really bad at timelines, so don't ask me, but it was in the span of two years. We did two <laughs> writing camps that were a week long each and we were just pumping songs out. The first writing camp, we were having a lot of fun being silly, writing like really empowering, like sexy <laughs> music. Second time we were like, let's get sad. And we were staying at this really cool house in um, the Hollywood Hills that was like, uh, what's his name? Old Hollywood guy. It was his house. It was like a, you know. Old Hollywood Hollywood guy. guy. Yeah, of course. (laughs) Old Hollywood man. It was haunted is what I'm getting at. It was sick. It was spooky. So we wrote some really cool, like sad sort of spooky songs. And then um, we had some new updates in my life. So I had to tag on a few extra songs. So we did another session like recently like end of last year um for the last two songs really yeah so it there was i wanted it to be like a 10 song thing and i ended up taking out some putting in new ones because it was they were just more relevant to my life why was that a part of the story that you needed to tell in this album um i don't know it's hard when you're making a a large project it's not just a single to keep things relevant because so much happens in my life at all times and I want the music that I'm putting out to be reflective of that but at the same time um I don't know I feel like I just wanted this to be new (laughs) and recent and I I don't know new things happen in my life that I want to talk about well because those decisions like that cost you money when you're at the center of it all like that costs you time like that's a big decision to go back in there and, and, and say, I need to make more music. Yeah, but it was very important to me because, I mean, I love every single song on the album. Like, there's not one that I'm like, ah, you know? And they all mean something different to me. And they're all, you know, at one point or another were true and happened. So that's the first time I've gotten to make music that tells a story. And that's all I've ever wanted. That's special. Very special. I- Any fear? Well, okay. If you look at all the places that people get a chance to get to know Lauren Gray, what role does music play Um, in that? Like, I get to know Lauren. If I listen to your music, I get to know you how? In what way? I think that I have a really hard time, like I said, communicating and expressing myself. And I know that's so corny and cliche, but for some reason there's something about writing a song about a situation that's so therapeutic and communicates my feelings better than I could with words. I mean, it still is words, but it's music. Do you feel like your communication skills <laughs> lack because of social media playing such a huge role in your life? Probably. I think there's a lot of contributing factors to that. I yeah. think, um, I, I mean, I was bullied in school, so totally. that put me off. And my friend, my friend is here visiting from Pennsylvania We've been friends since middle school and we were talking, we were bowling and we were talking and he was like, um, cause he was bullied because of me cause he was friends with me. And 
he was like, yeah, for some reason when I walk into a store, I can talk to like adults, but if I see a group of kids walk in, I'm scared. Like I'm a 22 year old man and I'm scared. And I was like, yeah, that's what happens when you're bullied in middle school. I, if I see a group of like teenage girls, I'm scared of them. I'm 20 years old. What am I afraid of? But like, I think that there's a lot of things that add up over time that make you, you know, a little hesitant about things. But music is the best way to understand you? I would say so. I mean, that's been, that's, I mean, I feel like I've communi- communicated my feelings most effectively through music because it's the most vulnerable you can be is writing a song mm. because you have to be willing to sound stupid and talk to the people around you to make a good song. So it's almost like there's this like third party purpose, but really you're connecting on like a human level and then you, something is being created from that. Am I making sense or of am I just course, being like no. philosophical and saying No, 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 no. <laughs> that's very possible. No, <laughs> I no, I, I totally understand it and it's really special. It's, it's true. It starts with something that's going on in your life and through communicating it out and working it out with people in the studio and what that has the ability to go on and do and connect with is pretty incredible and boundless. But when you go into the studio most recently, do you go in ripe with emotion? Um, or how do you As enter? of lately, yeah. Um, at my first, so like I said, at my first writing camp, it was very like, we're empowered, we're having fun. Like, the, like told you so, um, the second single off the album that I think will be out by the time this comes out, um, was just fun. Like we were, we were excited to be working with a group of friends that everyone was like, knew each other and was happy and we were in this house together and we just wanted to write something fun and like empowering and sexy and whatever is that where you say like hit it quick ain't no friends with benefits or something yes okay. <laughs> also <laughs> i do say that <laughs> i'm so silly um yes but that was the first writing camp that was a lot of the what was being thrown around okay. and then the second writing camp is when we were like okay let's Let's get into it. Let's talk about how we feel. But then you go in at the end of the year. Yeah, I go back. To do another writing here or just do sessions? Do sessions. Because I, I heard something in the orange. <laughs> ah, an by song. Zach Bryan. And I was like, I want that. Mm. Um, and I had just gone through a breakup for the first time. Um, we got back together after like two days and broke up again. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to write about it. So I did. And I, I was, like, very inspired by Something in the Orange. I love that song. I think it's brilliant. And do, I was like, I have to have this. Do you share that record with the person? Uh, yeah. <laughs> did they give the, just, I yeah. love playing people, like, the songs that are written about them. I love it. Oh, my God. I just watch, like, this thing. It's about me. <laughs> Maybe. <That's... laughs> Maybe it is. Yes, I, I do play it for them. And do you listen to their critique as, like, that's what they do? Do I listen to their critique? Yeah, do they give, like, notes? Do they give thoughts? Do they give response? No. What are they going to say? I don't, I, don't, I don't fucking know. I mean... I've it's... never sat with somebody as they play me a song written about me. And it's, like, not good songs either. <laughs> yeah, they're. I'm sure they're horrendous in terms um, of, like, the story you're telling. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah. But I. it's therapeutic for me. Mm. I'm like, yeah, this is how I feel about you. This is how you made me feel. Listen to it. Got it. Yeah. So you, okay, so you break up, you write songs about it, <laughs> you get back together, and then you break up again? Yeah. That you, time it was final. Got it. Well, whose idea was it to get back together the first time? Well, the only time, I guess. Um, his. Got it. Yeah. What went wrong so quickly? How long, like, what, how long did, like, between the first breakup and getting back together and <laughs> the second? It was, like, half and half. It was, like, half the relationship, and then we broke up, but, like, four months in, and, like, went, like, four months longer, and then we were, like, eh. Okay, got it. Yeah. So eight months. Seven, I think, actually. Seven. Seven, seven months, two days, 42 hours. Don't ask me. <laughs> don't ask me. I can tell you that. 16 minutes. I don't have that kind of information. Well, I'm sure Ari does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he was counting down from the second he met you to the second he ended. Whoa. <laughs> he wrote it in his diary. Dear diary. Dear diary, today I met the most beautiful girl in the world <laughs> who's super famous on the internet. You, wait, you posted a TikTok afterwards about the breakup, and you referenced cheating. Oh, oh no. He cheated on you? No. Shut the fuck up. No. I just... No way. No. I was going to say, there's... I mean, he, I don't know, but it's don't just... Know. There was there was things I'm that... Just, no way. Okay. No, no, you go, you go, you go. Did he it, cheat on you? No. 
But he'd be an idiot. It it was it was exactly as I thought. Let's just put it that way. What the fuck? Yeah. Can I read your uh, TikTok caption? <gasps> Go ahead. <laughs> Go you, ahead. You were on the video you wrote, it's always the one he told you not to worry about. Yes. What the fuck? It is. No way. Did he lose his brain? I don't know. I'm not perfect. That's but... yeah, but sister. Are you for real? I just hate it because I know you I know you know the situation. Yeah, you're so like, like a 50 out of 10. Whoa. I mean it's fucking Thank Lauren you. Gray. Are you I stupid? have my faults. I have my we yeah, know. We're all human beings at we the know end I of have the my day. Faults, but... Of course. My God. Didn't you all just meet each other's families? <laughs> um, <laughs> the tea is the holiday, of. right? You, 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 yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, you know, shit happens. Shit happens. What does that mean anymore? I'm like, just not, I'm not upset. I'm fine. I'm happy. I'm happy. Are you happy what, today? What, I am. Do you find happiness only after the records are made? <laughs> Honestly? Yeah. <laughs> I like, I like, I feel like my feelings are validated once the song is made. When you were talking about playing the song for someone, which song comes to mind? What do you mean from the like, album? Yeah, like you were like you like playing a, sitting down playing a song for someone. Okay, I I I will say this because my fans already know about this song and they I I've posted so many snippets of it, but there's a song called Predictable. The opening line on that one—that's what I thought. Um, <laughs> why am I your girlfriend? You seem so you seem so so ashamed. Yeah. <laughs> what? And I played it for him. Not, oh. this, not, not, no. Last one. Oh, okay, got it. God, that sounds so bad. I'm say. sorry. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, so there's two guys it's about. We have two men in this, this uh, reference in this album or one? Let me think. Two. Got it. This is how I knew the other one wasn't going to work. <laughs> in my opinion, because I'm sure you do. I'd love to hear your He opinion. had you wearing Dallas Cowboys gear and you're from Philadelphia. <laughs> so that was never going to work. You're so right. <laughs> and I never wore it again after the breakup. I actually, now I watch the Cowboys and I'm like. Pfft. Yeah, you were doomed from day one. I know. You're so right. <laughs> there was a there was a lot of things I was doing that were, everyone, everyone was like. Hmm. like who are you? <laughs> who are you? So you played that song for him? <laughs> yeah. Sick. Everyone was like, you're just letting this man live in your house. Yeah. I okay. remember him. Oh, oh my God. That's right. Yeah, he was something else that guy. We talked all about him the last time. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was, was a I, Did I break up with him last time? I was here? No, you were still with him last time. Oh. Uh, yeah. That was a 2020 oh. And you guys questioned me then. You were like, isn't he, like, really old? And I was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. <sighs> yeah. And I really liked your most recent relationship. I really had a lot of hope in that. I thought it was really cute. No, you didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> You're such a liar. <laughs> All right, keep talking, guys. <laughs> You're my fucking favorite. <laughs> no. It is what it is. It's okay. You know that you no. know that TikTok sound that's like that's what I get for going around screaming my man my 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 man so loud that's me every time today I actually I popped into a group chat with one of my fans were like Lauren's gonna stop <laughs> with the boys and I popped in I was like <sighs> yeah I'm a serial dater I can't help it I'm trying to stop it's like an it's like I have to quit are you afraid of being alone mm. less less so now. I feel like I had a really, really, really big problem with that, especially in 2019, because my mommy just left me. And I was like, oh, this 27-year-old man wants to move into my house? Sure. The fuck? <laughs> but I do think that was an issue for a second there. Um, but I feel like now I I feel better about being alone. Mm -hmm. I've I've grown a lot. But it really is hard, though. Like, it coming is coming to terms with that, and then also like your your like your mom fully moving out for like officially. It is. I was vulnerable. Yeah, I was vulnerable, duh, but, but rightfully so, sis. Yeah. yeah, you were super young and like still are. Yes. Yeah, I make my mistakes. But how do you pick the right people to keep around you then? Um, I don't know. It's really hard for me. I feel like I. Like I said, I'm not perfect, and I'm not always the easiest person to be friends with. And 
I, like I said, I'm not a good communicator. And I also am very quick to be like, it's like, I'm not, I'm working on this, but I'm not very forgiving. And that's something that I need to work on as well. Because I don't know, I feel like I've just been burned so many times that I just, my circle just gets smaller and smaller because I don't trust anyone. And that's a fault of mine. But I don't know. I understand that. You gotta, it, it's hard because like safety is so important. Mm-hmm. And they're, at the end of the day, like so much is at risk. But giving people opportunity to learn and grow, I think, is worth it. Yeah. But then also knowing at the same time you can't be taken advantage of it. Like you, you, you can only. It's really, it's really hard, especially in LA, to know like oh, yeah. when, when you're doing the right thing because I feel like. I mean, especially recently, I feel like I've been burned a few times and I start to feel guilty for setting boundaries. Like I have boundaries. I'm like, you know, that was fucked up what you did to me. Mm. But I feel bad because I don't know. Even when people fuck me over, I still feel bad because at one point or another, I loved them, you know. So I don't know. I totally understand. I should get a therapist. I mean... I, I think that's, like, the most healthy for everyone who can has that opportunity. Like, fuck yes. But it, it, it is a balance because, like, again, like, you need to afford somebody the opportunity to, like, fuck up. But they can only fuck up once or twice. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, and then how far is too far? A hundred percent. And, like, am I, like, letting people walk all over me by letting them back into my life? Am I, or am I protecting my peace too hard? Because I do that. I do do that. I protect myself. Yeah, to a point of isolation. Yes. That's not good either. Yeah. It's a balance. And and to be honest, like, and I'm like the wrong person to talk about it because, like, God's truth, like, the the friend group that, like, we kind of have shared, they're like new friends in my life. Most of my friends, we've been friends for like 13, 14 years. Right. You know what I mean? So, like, they're really long standing relationships. We kind of grew up together. Like, and like, we've kind of fucked up early on in the friendship. Yeah. You know, so like those beyond about ba- like when we're together, there's no real boundaries. But like in life, you know what I mean? When you're out and about, you do things. There's, of, of course. Yeah. Um, it's really interesting. I'm like the worst person to talk about it with. Mm. You got any thoughts? Dan has no real friends. No, I'm kidding. He's a bunch. <laughs> He's super popular. It's ridiculous. I, you're, you're a popular guy. He knows Bono. You do? We wanted to talk about that. I mean, I'm just <laughs> God, bringing, up cool. your, bringing up your fucking friend. <laughs> Not my fault Bono's on the list, man. <laughs> Damn. Damn. All right, let me ask you a question about your music. Um, yes. well, <laughs> you don't want to yes. discuss anything more about you two? Nope. Okay. okay. Um, I respect that. Were you just taken back by that water for a second? Sorry, you had like... Um, no, my pinky was up, and then I was like, that's... Oh. <laughs> it's that's on camera. <laughs> I'm like, hmm. What was the first song that you ever wrote and released that you're proud of? Mm, guilty. Guilty. Honestly, if okay. I'm being completely honest, the last single was the first song where I was like, yes, I feel like this is me. Because it was the first song where I said, yes, I am sad. Oh, and you said you're miserable. Yeah, I am most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what fuels that? Myself. <laughs> Self-hatred. Do mm. you feel like that's in your control? Y- yes, I do. I think... I go through phases. I have really high highs and then really low lows. So, I mean, I'm like really doing some soul searching right now. I just bought another house in Pennsylvania to live there part time because I'm like, Mazel to, tov. Thank you. I was like, I need to find myself. I need to connect to my roots. I need to remember that there are people that were there before this. I totally understand that. And you should do that. That's really healthy. I'm really excited. I close next week and I'm really, really excited. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. That is so the right thing to do. I'm so jealous. I'm on a farm. I was, oh! When five I the, acres, no one around me. Fuck! <laughs> is it right near where you grew up? Yeah. I was sick. It's I'm actually, like, in the town that I lived in, um, that I, like, grew up in from, like, three years old to, like, third grade. Sick. So, yeah. Oh, I do that and smoke weed every day. I just cool want to be, that? I just want to be happy. I want to be in nature, and I want to frolic in my little creek. Like a farmhouse. Yeah. It's on, like, five acres, and the guy was like, yeah, there's no close neighbors. I don't know if that... Like, scary. I was like, no, perfect. It's great. I can't wait. <laughs> Isn't it crazy, though, that, like, 
You say you're miserable and you're not always the happiest. But like people look at you and they're like, she looks perfect. She looks beautiful. She owns two houses. She's not even 21. It's, I'm compensating. I'm <laughs> overcompensating. I'm like, yes, I have to do my hair and makeup because I'm so glum on the inside. <laughs> but sometimes I'm really happy. I think it's, I think it's natural for everyone, especially here. Yeah. It's really easy to be like, damn, I suck. Yeah, you can lose yourself. Yeah. No, I don't want that to happen. I mean, I'm only 20. I've got a long way to go. But being aware of that and calling it out early is so vital. Yeah, it is. Good on you. No, that's really the best thing that I like. I'm like really, really the right thing to do. Thank you. Really healthy. I'm going to write so many good yeehaw me- yes. songs. You should I'm going to sit that. at my creek and just can write something. I mean, so this album. <laughs> yes. What do you learn about yourself for making it? Um, oh, okay. So I feel like my confidence in my ability to write music has like skyrocketed because I, before I was always being put in sessions with huge producers, huge writers, and like no one listens to you, you know? They know how to write hit songs because they've had hit songs. They don't really care what you're feeling. They just know it works. So, but that's not really the like what I wanted for music. Like my goal with music isn't to have a a hit song and like be I mean obviously that's great but like have a one-off hit song I want to tell more of a story and that's always been my goal and that's what I've always tried to communicate to labels and things but they look at me and they see one thing so Mm -hmm. it's the only way for me to really truly do what I want to do is by being independent and then eventually maybe someone will get the vision oh sister they will but right now I'm perfectly happy because I I feel like, like I was saying, I was having all of those sessions where I just felt like shit. I felt like no one was listening to me. And that sucks because music is supposed to be this like really beautiful experience because it is. And I feel like working with people that I knew well and being able to say dumb things, and, but then also have really great ideas and just having but- the opportunity to actually try. But also totally vulnerable and honest. Yeah. I mean, misery loves company. That is like, th- that's like a, sums up a portion of the conversation we've had here today. Oh yeah. That's my favorite. That's my favorite one. Um, what makes it your favorite? It's my yeehaw. <laughs> that's my something in the orange. Got my cowboy boots on. Where yep. did that line, I mean, obviously we know it. it's famous, but how, did somebody say it? Did it just sum up the song? So. how did it start? Misery loves company. We were at, um. Bardo, we were at uh, Bardo's house, the producer, um, in Slow, in San Luis Obispo, because I, like, I got dumped, and I was like, okay, I'm leaving, I'm going with my friends, and they were like, we can write, so we were sitting on the patio, and Bardo was, like, playing the guitar, and we wrote Misery Loves Company, Um, there's a lot of songs on the album, there's a lot of self-reflection, I feel like, especially in songs that are, like, it's a lot of... I don't want to let you down. I know I suck because that's a lot of what I was feeling at the time and what I f- sometimes feel now. But um, Misery Loves Company was more, I don't know. There's more like grit behind that one, it, but it's still sad. I mean, it was about my breakup, right? But were, were, You deal with like inner thoughts, but were there people on the outside mimicking what you were thinking on the inside? What do you mean? telling you that you were not enough or good enough or whatever like I think it's like just a general feeling I mean (laughs) definitely getting broken up with the first the first time that hurt because it was like left field it came out of nowhere and then I wrote that song so I was like damn because it it happened like so fast (laughs) I didn't know how to process it so I was like I'm gonna go to the country and write about it what was the excuse? What was the reason? The reason? Um, I need to spend more time with my friends. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I was like, well, you can do that. No one's stopping you. But it was really awkward. I, it was, yeah, there was a lot of weird things. Just It's giving it mature. Yeah. It's giving lack of I mean, I don't want to be with someone who's telling me that they miss another girl while I'm dating them. Whoa! What? Yeah. That's not what I want for myself. No. Oh, I miss her. Okay, well, go be with her. <laughs> and guess what? He did. He did. Oh, fuck. That's all right. You can have him. <laughs> ah, 
God. Misery loves company. That's a great record. What uh, are you yeah. thinking, Daniel? Um, is is that reference to the line? Is it wishful thinking that you're out alone? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it was. <laughs> and it was and it is. But then where's a song like Takes Two come in? That was the first writing camp where we were just having the fun, sexy one. That was fun, sexy. where "Told You So" came from. Yeah, fun, sexy girl. Yeah, they're fun. <laughs> I loved it. This album really shows all sides of you. It does. We have, I mean, the "Told You So"s and the "Takes Twos," and then we have like country s, <laughs> and then we have like punk rock elements Damn. so there's a lot but it all it's really interesting the way that they all fit together because i i do think that they they all exist kind of in the same world which is something that was really important to me because it's very easy for me to be like today i'm a country singer and then it like doesn't make sense with the rest of the project so because i love experimenting with music are you hoping to get to a point where you find a sonic at least scape i feel like they're kind of there there is that thread through all of the songs um where they all do exist in the same world but I don't know I think I'm I listen to so many different types of music and I love every type of music genuinely from like metal to country to pop to rock everything so I don't think there will ever be a world where I try to put myself in a box if I don't have to do you ever think of a world where you don't post on social media um I dream of a world no I, I do I do like being connected, but I do wish sometimes that I could uh, separate it from myself. The hard part, I was just talking about this the other day, the hard part about social media is that it's so intertwined with your personal life. Mm. And um, it, like work, like people go to work and then they come home and they're done. It's like social media is so intertwined with you as a person and who you are personally. And sometimes that makes me really nervous because... I like I said, like I said, I'm not perfect, so it's really hard to, to keep up sometimes and feel like I'm worthy of being someone that people want to look at, you know. Do Do you feel like you're letting your fans down if you're not sharing everything with them? Sometimes, sometimes they're. I mean, the good thing is that they've they've kind of grown up with me. So, I mean, I you know I started this seven years ago and I'm 20 years old now. So they've grown up with me quite a bit and. I feel like they're very respectful and understanding of, you know, when I'm going through something and I need need a second. Mm -hmm. But in a sense, yeah, because I know that for a lot of people, it's easy for me to not realize how much of a difference it makes to be there for people and show up. Um, but, yeah, I do sometimes feel that way. Because there are people, like, if Taylor Swift stopped releasing music, I would probably roll over and die. So, I don't know. <laughs> if I'm that person for someone else, then I have to try my hardest. Yeah, you owe it to them. Yeah, yeah. But there's some things, like, I've been trying to find where the balance is between personal and public. It exists. Like, I gotta stop shouting, my man, my man, my man, <laughs> yeah. so fucking loud. <laughs> I'm so loud about it. For what? Yeah, no. yeah why? Why you, is it just like content? No, I think I just get a little too excited. I get that. I get a little too excited because I'm like, oh, it, it it all seems so good in the beginning, and then it's like, oh, uh. <laughs> I just think, the and then I just archive everything. I'm like, ah, <laughs> just that never happens. I just think also like the second you introduce someone to what that is, is the second they just get like a whole different taste. And, and dudes in LA. Oh, it's Everybody crazy. wants something. Yeah, they all clout chase, sister. Yeah. Like, Dolly Parton has a husband. Do you even know what the fuck he looks like? No. Exactly. And that's how it should be. Yeah. And, you know, my friends would date people, and the, the way I would know that they're good people is that they would have a Instagram account that's on private. Yeah. Which... I love a, I love a good request. Yeah. You know, I love a you good approval work process. For it. You yes. have to work for it. Yeah, no, they... Um, yeah. I think I think I just have I'm can I'm a really bad judge of character sometimes when it comes to knowing what people want from me. Yeah, but it's and also then it hard. comes out. You're also young, like you're growing, and everything lo is a learning process. And God, fuck, like yeah. You also want to like you know fall know. in love, get your heart broken. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, God, it does. But I don't know. I think everything happens for a reason. Amen. But then I look back and I'm like, 
damn, I'm stupid. <laughs> yeah, Someone's sitting point. here like in my face coming to carpets with me. And then they're like, you know what? I miss her. Yeah, and you, I'm like, yeah. Y'all really were out there this last <laughs> one. Y'all were really out there. Yeah. Y'all, you really validated the fuck out of him. <sighs> Which you did. I just no get offense. excited. I just get excited. And I'm like, woo. And then I'm like, oh, <laughs> oops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only like a, a growth of a few hundred thousand followers later, you know. <sighs> well, Whatever you win some, you lose some. <laughs> Their brand rates went way up. <laughs> Thank you, Lauren Gray. Shout Damn. out. Shout out. Shout out. That's impressive. No, it is. This is what I'm saying. Like, this is why I need to date a celebrity. You got a lot of power there, Lauren. Like, I, I need to get out there. That I'm doing the opposite. I'm like, no, I, you should do the opposite. Daddy needs a little, you, you know, daddy needs to suck on that clout tea, you know. <laughs> daddy needs a little push push. Daddy needs a little validation out there in the, uh, you know, the universe. Yeah. You feel me? Yes. Um, I'm going to Pennsylvania. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm going to go try to. Yep, I'm disconnecting. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go look look to be even more deeply connected. Yes, yeah. Plug me in. I need to communicate even less. <laughs> <laughs> That's healthy. Yes. Damn. What, why do people follow you? Do you ever ask yourself that? <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> why the fuck? Um. <laughs> yes, I do. Um. Do we have an answer? Do we have an answer? Um. I don't really know. I don't. I have no idea. I think that my, there's a lot, there's been a growth and there's been a public growth and it's not just like a two year span. It's, it's watching someone turn into an adult Mm -hmm. and fuck up and grow. And I think that that's a really, really special experience. And I also, I, I, I have a really, really strong connection with my fans because I started social media out of a place of nobody loves me and I need friends. And then all of these people were like, hey, you're cool. And I ran with it for seven years. So, And I still treat it the same way, even though it's it's harder now because it's a business, which I kind of hate sometimes because I really, really looked, and I still do, but look at social media as an outlet and how it's so different it's changed so much corporate business yeah it's like very financial it's very political and i feel like i'm usually on the outside of those conversations because i'm not really in the mix so things i don't know i feel like my my fans view me one way and then i like la views me a whole different way (laughs) <laughs> what, what's the difference? How do you, how does LA view you, and how I does your fans view you? I don't know. I think that it's hard. It's hard to have boundaries in LA because you like one person fucks you over, and now y'all aren't friends anymore. Now everybody knows about it. It's everybody's mm-hmm. business. So I don't know. I try to stay out of it as much as I can, and I think that's sometimes hurts me because. So much of this is, but there's like a thing, there's like a difference between being, I don't want to be like LA cool. Mm-hmm. I'm here because I have to be here. Like, obviously I'm going back to Pennsylvania because a part of me is missing. Um, but I don't want to, I don't want to be LA cool. It's just not for me. And I said that last time I was here too. I was like, I have and nothing has changed. You know, it's funny when uh, Bryce Hall invited you to the New Year's party and you respond, you're like, sorry, I'm busy. <laughs> I was. <laughs> I was so busy that day. Um, no, I love Bryce. Um, I've known Bryce for a very long time, but I just saw what was happening there. What? Mm, mm, mm. You saw it, right? Wait, what one? Oh, the, the, the tweet? The TikTok that was like, he was like, I'm having a New Year's party and I'm inviting all the people tagged. And it's like every girl that Josh Richards has ever been involved with. Oh, Jesus Christ. And that's why I was like, yeah, Oh my, my God, God, I just remembered that you had a little thing with Josh Richards. No. It was not a little thing. It was like... Was it a big thing? No. No. <laughs> a fleeting second? It was, it was a blip. <laughs> it was like a blink and you miss it. <laughs> I have to stop. Listen to the album if you want to get to know Lauren Gray. As she sits here today, there's a link in the description below. But really, music is going to be the best source to get to know Lauren Gray as yeah. you grow. And as you move to Pennsylvania and you start a whole new country music career. And yes. I'm put my boots on and get in the creek. Never say never. You know. Th- this is the moment. Mm-hmm. 
And also, it, it, listen to this album if you really want to get to understand her today. But really, Misery Loves Company, that is your Something in the Orange. Yes, I love that so song. Good. And I wanted it so bad. I was like, I want a little country, a little spooky something. Really good. Yeah, thank you. Um, What does this bear represent that's in both vid- uh, videos so far? So, um, it does connect. There's four videos. I've talked about this. There's four videos that connect and it doesn't really make sense until the end um but it will make sense it's just if i tell you now it'll ruin the next two videos all right keep the secret but it Mm. it does make sense i know right now it's like what the fuck it does make sense does uh you posted a tiktok about a bear moving its head in the back of your video yeah was that marketing it it worked thank you yes yeah Fuck yeah. Um, oh. I did feel bad, though, because people were like, is this for real or? No. So, I'm... yeah. <laughs> that was clever. Thank you. That was real clever. I thought about it for a long time. We were like, we had so much fun with the bear idea because I, I wanted, I was like, I want this thing to exist outside of me. I don't want just, I don't want everything to be very me focused. You'll see what it, it makes sense. But I was like, I want something else. And I was really inspired by Donnie Darko. You know, the bunny yeah. the bunny and Donnie Darko. I was like, I want something like that. So you have like a yellow bear. Yes. And he's kind of scary. <laughs> he's kind of a little <laughs> freaky. But it does make sense at the end. By the way, if you want to see any of what we're talking about right now, there's <laughs> going to be a link in the description below. Again, you can listen to all of Lauren Gray's music to you on Amazon Music. It is down there. It's down in there. there. Thank you. What else are you thinking, Daniel? Um, okay, I have an others list on here. Let's let's read through them. Oh, oh Jesus, what? Uh, do you get free Eras tour tickets because you were in that Taylor Swift music video? God, I hope so. We'll find out. So not yet. Not yet. Okay. As of right now, I'm I'm not going, but I'm hoping that. Okay. I mean, yeah, I love her. I would I do know. anything to see her. You just posted a video of you like crying over her. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh at me. <laughs> love her i could talk about i've been i've been at parties where like someone brings it up you're like oh you were in the video oh uh, i i will stand there for an hour be like you know she's just the best and i go on and on <laughs> and i do it again oh you want me to keep going down my list yeah yeah, your yeah list. keep going down your list um everyone in the room is afraid of what the fuck is, oh, this on, is on the other list very mellow here uh who's right perfect wrong time and do you think Going back to them is a good idea. You posted something about Mr. Right, right time, wrong person. You know what mm, I'm trying to say. Yeah, that's another thing. I'm just, I love being cryptic on the internet. I know. That's why we're trying to get some real answers here. I know. Mm. Um, Wait, can you read that again? Yes. Let me pull up the exact TikTok. I wish I had my TV set up. We could all examine this one together. Yeah. Oh, there's a TV. I miss the TV. So Wait, do I. The TV put me on blast a couple times last time. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know we were talking about that. This says going back to my right person, wrong time because this could be the right time, but probably isn't. It's probably not. But you think it's the right person, though. Yeah, but it's one of those things where it's like, uh, oh, always, on. always been there. Okay. Yeah. What's the date of that tweet? This is two weeks ago. Oh damn! January seventeenth <laughs> is when I found this post. But I'm done. No longer shouting, my man, my man, my man. I'm minding my business. But you are saying, though, that yeah. this is the right person. Yeah, but time. like I said, it might not be. Okay. You never know. I'm just trying to, I promise, I made a promise, I made a vow that I'm, I will stay single. I'm working on it. For how long? I need to stay single. Last time it was three months. That was a record for me. Damn. I was a record. I can't help it. I just like. You should try 29 years. I am a, I fall for it. Dating sucks. Why I should 29 years. <laughs> shut up. It does, but I, I don't know. I'm such a sucker for it. Someone's like, wow, you're the best thing ever. And I'm like, yes, tell me more. <laughs> Let me post you on my Instagram. <laughs> like, sh- girl. <laughs> and everyone's like, that. we're tired. You know? I'm like, I know. I know. I, I'm, I'm aware of it. But I do, I just, the, fir- the first person that's like, wow, Lauren, you're special. Yeah, but you know you can have them do that. You don't need to have, you can have numerous people telling you that. I know, but I don't know. It's, it is a problem. I'm working on it. Yeah, slow and steady. I know. This is my single era. <laughs> Sound confident in that one. I just know me, and I know that, like, the first person that, like, walks in front of me is like, wow, Lauren, I'm going to be like, yes. Lauren, I'm sure you get those messages all the time. Yeah, but for some reason, I just get fixated. I'm like, yes, 
you are the one. <laughs> They're never the one. They're <laughs> never, quite literally, never the one. And then here I am a year later, like. Same tune. Yeah. But it's okay. We grow. We learn. Yes, exactly. <coughs> the last thing on my others list is you turn 21 soon. Do you think your life's going to change at all? Or are you just going to still be the same sitting at home by yourself or with whoever <laughs> is next? <laughs> oh, I think it'll be quite the same. Okay. Um, the one thing I don't want this year is another Coachella birthday. <laughs> I've had birthdays uh, at Coachella for the past four years. Yeah, not good. I'm over it. I don't think anything will change. And what happened at Coachella? What did you learn at Coachella a couple years ago? Oh my God, you met your boyfriend that you just broke up with there. No, no. she was informed no, you that go? someone was, she was being cheated on by some fans, right? What? I was being cheated on by fans? No, didn't a fan. Oh, oh Finding yes. out your ex was cheating on you uh, from some random girls at Coachella. Yes. I remember I this. I wasn't there. You were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't there. Um, oh, my God. Yeah. We weren't there, but we heard. Yeah. yeah. Brooke said Harry Styles. And some girl came up to her and was like, oh, what are you doing? They were, like, talking in the pit or whatever. <laughs> what are you doing after this? And Brooke was like, oh. And she didn't want to tell the girl that she was my friend. So she was like, oh, like Lauren Gray's party or birthday or whatever. And um, the girl was like, oh, wasn't she dating so-and-so? He doesn't. He's gotten enough airtime from me. That's yeah, that's yeah, as far yeah. as I'll we go. We're done with that. Uh, uh, so-and-so. And Brooke was like, oh, I think so. You know, she's like playing dumb. <laughs> and the girl was like, yeah, he was in my DMs and this, that, and the other. Mm. I was like, How? I was, like, right there all the time. But they find a way. Oh, they always do. Yeah. Damn. God, I'm so I remember stupid. that. But isn't that also the time that you met your most recent boyfriend, too? Like I said, I'm so stupid. On timeline? Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the first time I met him. But we have to, can we, because you were there. Yeah. We, we have to agree that I was vulnerable then, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. The most. <laughs> yeah, you just found out that your boyfriend was cheating on you. Mm -hmm. Of course. Like, let's get silly. And then silly lasted seven months. <laughs> <laughs> I, was just, I was silly for a little longer than I had anticipated. Uh, oh, my God. You got to listen to the album. Get to know Lauren Gray. Uh, link in the description They're below. They're like, I okay? don't think I want to. <laughs> no, you do. You do. You do. I'm t I promise you, you do. And the real her exists in this body of work. <laughs> Anything else in your notes? No, I don't think so. Oh, you know what? I did have one oh, other thing. Jesus. Okay. I did research. No, I, know. I appreciate it because this is like, I enjoy this. Um, so You were once pitched a song about being bisexual. Yes. Tell me about that. Um, It is exactly what it is. I I was at a, in a meeting. This was right before I left the label. And they pitched the song to me and I was listening to it. And it was like, I like girls and like boys or whatever. And I was like, have you, um, have you like listened, like actually listened to the song? And they were like, um, yeah, it's a hit. Like, yeah, maybe for someone, but not for me. And they're like, well, if you don't take it, someone else is going to take it. You know how it is. It's like, yeah. if you don't take it, someone else is going to take it, and they're going to be a sensation. I was like, it's about, I don't like, I'm straight. Yeah, you don't identify as bisexual. <laughs> no. So it's not true to you. Why no, would they why would I do, do that? that? Can you imagine? Yeah, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. And also stealing somebody else's truth. That's like wrong all around. Yeah, I was like, then it's the right song for someone else, but yeah, it's not right for me. And that's okay. Yeah, but then I was like, okay, maybe it's time to go. Yeah. Because they were really, really adamant. No matter what I said, I was like, you don't get it. Like, I have a lot of gay friends that would be like, girl. Yeah, like, confused. What? I'm singing about liking girls. Like, no, you don't. Yeah, I'd be one of them. I'd be like, what the fuck is <laughs> yeah, going on? What the fuck? <laughs> um, so yeah, that put me off. And there was, there was a lot of other things that put me off, obviously, from that video you're talking about. Where you got that information from. Oh, yeah. I did watch that whole video yeah. last night. You also don't post on YouTube much. You post like three times in the past year or something. YouTube involved. stresses me out. Can I tell you a story? Yes. Okay. When I was little, like, re I'm talking like eight, like really little, is when YouTube was like first starting to be a thing. Do you remember the Leave Britney Alone video? Of course. Yeah. I commented on that. And it was like my first thing ever. And I forget what I commented, but it was something like an eight-year-old would say. And I, for some reason, was like at the top of the comments and was getting so much hate. And from that point on, it made me afraid of YouTube. And I have like subconscious wow. trauma with YouTube. 
from like being eight and being attacked under the Leave Britney Alone video. I that is an God. early trigger. Yes. And it like scares me away from YouTube. And and YouTube is hard and there's there's a lot that goes into it. But that's genuinely like the root of all evil when it comes to YouTube for me. Fascinating. Yeah. You like hold things. I really do. You really need therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Have you gone? Moral of the story. No. Oh, sister. I'll no. get you free better help if you want. <laughs> On me. You get you three months of free at a minimum. We'll give you a free year. Perfect. Probably a few years. To be Perfect. <laughs> yeah, she means it's going to take a while. It would take a while. Everyone watching this be like, what the fuck By is the way, wrong with her? We'll put a link for better help in the description below. Too. <laughs> Use so, the code Lauren for 15%. Uh, no, no, she's not getting paid for that. But if you uh, if you or somebody you know, you know, does need therapy, you know, it's there for you. There you um, go. I appreciate you. Thank you. If you really want to get to know Lauren Gray, you got to listen to this album. It is out April... 21st. April 21st. We're going to put a link in the description below. You can listen to all of our music on Amazon Music. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you. Lauren Gray, everybody. Woo!